Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And as you can see, we have the 1026 patch note details before us. This will be dropping later tonight at about 11 p.m. There will be no maintenance, so we don't have to worry about the game going down. However, this is a mixed bag. I feel as though this is going to upset a lot of people. A couple mistakes were made on stream. So that being said, let's talk about it. First and foremost, we got one new character coming in, three new uniforms. So let me pull them up on screen here. First and foremost, we have Makari, the new character, the speed legend, if you will, the moonstone of this update. Yes, it is an epic quest update. So of course, they gotta make some money and not just off the uniforms. Obviously, they gotta sell you first and foremost. A crystal wall character so if you're free to play look out for this one be wise don't just jump in and start spending crystals all willy-nilly because even though only three characters are getting upgrades in this update if you will that's 10,000 crystals Makari by herself is gonna be costing over 7,000 crystals ladies and gentlemen you gotta spend 6,000 to get the Epic Quest Deluxe Package. And then you gotta buy her uniform because without her uniform, she cannot heal. And we know characters that can't heal are never going to be top tier in PvE or PvP content. That's just how it goes. You need to have a heal so you can stay alive for as long as possible. Okay? So, this character by herself, over 7,000. Hey, man. It is what it is. Let's talk about it. So she's a speed female alien superhero. Ha ah, boy, leadership, useless, typical for speed characters, passive, it's good and bad. We got 30% ignore defense here. That's basically a joke, but we got 30% ignore dodge. That's nice for null and other types of content. So that's pretty cool. We have the tier two passive that gives her 30% guaranteed dodge. We got 50% chance to penetrate there. And then we got some damage reduction. That is pretty nice. First active skill has stun. That's just whatever to me. Second active skill has fracture, incapacitation, which removes active buffs. And then we have paralysis. Could be good for ABX, but Luna Snow, man. Luna Snow, Luna Snow. Okay, moving on. She removes all debuffs from herself for three seconds every eight seconds. That's basically every four seconds if you have max skill cooldown. This is actually a pretty substantial thing if you want to use this character for PvP. But how good will she be there? We don't know, but do keep in mind that this attack isn't counter-attacking. We know that counter-attacks in this game are generally very powerful. In some cases, they can just one-shot other characters. They've been on a counter-attack wave and they've been getting it right more often than not lately. Moving on, the third skill. Uh, she now has the highest damage accumulation in the game alongside Magneto. We'll see how this works out for her. Do keep in mind, this is a 10 second duration with a 15 second cooldown which means you can keep this thing up pretty much all the time as long as you have 50% reduced cooldown duration. So this will be very interesting because unlike a couple of the top tier characters in the game that have like a 1 or 2 second gap i.e. Moonstone, this character she's a deluxe package character same cost as Moonstone but They've made it so that this character can keep her damage accumulation up the entire time you're using her from the moment you trigger the third skill if you just keep using it off cooldown. This is a pretty big deal. It's a high amount of damage accumulation and you can keep it up all the time. So we'll see just how strong she ultimately ends up becoming. For a lot of people, myself included, at this day and age, at this moment in time, if you're coming in and you have the same cost as Moonstone, in addition to a uniform, which means I have to spend even more than that, you need to come in with the same level of power, same amount of damage, same amount of survivability, or more damage, if not more survivability, okay? So we'll see how this thing works out. Her skills look really, really cool, especially if you get the uniform. Fourth skill, just a stun. I think it looks really cool in terms of the animation. And then the fifth skill also has paralysis, five seconds of paralysis and five seconds of invincibility. Really cool kit. The accumulation is what has me excited. 
and the ignore dodge to be honest with you guys i feel like the ignore dodge will make her really good for like dispatch and then world boss legend against null since she's a speed type hey man mephisto might get ran through you feel me so this is what her uniform looks like this is what's being changed for her she gets 30% max HP recovery. And this is being applied every time she uses her third skill. And they left a note here that says the damage has been decreased compared to the modern skill. So basically when you have the uniform, the third skill is gonna do less damage, but more hits and increase the overall damage that way. Kind of stupid if you ask me, I'm not too sure why you would decrease the damage and then increase the amount of hits so you can get the damage that way because let's say the boss i don't know jumps into an iframe or whatnot having more hits doesn't mean anything if the hits don't connect you feel me so i'd rather get the same amount of damage we had before plus the additional hit kind of seems stupid to me and they're changing the first active skill by changing it from a three second stun to a two second stun let me see 75 percent of physical attack and 178 for the physical damage did they lower the amount of damage as well <laughs> what the heck is wrong with these guys bro <laughs> like this is actually crazy so with her uniform they made her first active skill weaker you guys see that it's 75 percent of physical attack and then the additional damage is 178 percent or just 178 versus here it's 75 percent of physical attack and then a thousand and sixty seven like that's just silly to me cooldown time is the same but they lowered the stun duration stun is pretty much like shadowland only at this point but okay we'll see ultimately how this character turns out next up is actually going to be cersei everybody's free to play queen so first things first they're increasing the character's recovery rate by 30 percent which overall increases the amount of uh, hp you can recover when you heal so it's not totally useless however i would have preferred 30 percent more max hp here versus 30 percent recovery rate because 30 percent more max hp would mean a lot more than just 30 percent recovery rate that's just me however 30% damage reduction to go along with that is actually really good. So salute to them for that. And they increase the uh, debuff duration from 10 seconds to 12 seconds. And they reduce the cooldown time from 20 seconds to 18 seconds here on her passive. So that's pretty cool. And this applies to all eternal allies just like it did before. So that's cool there. Her tier two passive this applies to all eternal allies increases their basic attack by 30 percent and then on top of that they do 30 percent more damage to super villains and take 30 percent less damage that that dirty 30 man 30 30 30 this is actually really really good i think cersei is going to continue to be a free to play queen so salute to net marble for knowing what they're doing there okay they could have increased this the 50 was already 30 but it's okay 30 percent more damage to super villains and uh 30 percent less damage is actually pretty good so salute to them for that especially since he's a free to play character i feel like a lot of you guys should definitely invest in her so hmm 15 percent max hp recovery she's gonna probably heal for about 17 percent just because they're increasing her recovery rate by a little bit but since it's only one second it's actually not that great i'm gonna be honest with you if it was like three seconds that would be amazing but with the damage reduction now she'll take less damage to begin with so it's okay moving on we have her damage accumulation which is let me see if it's no it's staying the same okay it's staying the same in terms of the duration it's six seconds and it was always a 16 second cooldown so the only thing they did right here was just add, I believe, paralysis and the heal to it. And they took away the stun that was already there. But it's okay. I'd rather have paralysis that ignores immunity than stun that cannot uh, stun world bosses. Because um, on my free-to-play account, I might not be able to uh, transcend Cersei right away. So it's okay to have the paralysis and lose the stun. Okay, let's see what else we got here. So the skill effect... Are the same as the modern but the skill range and the hit count has been increased she still has the charm and she still has four seconds of invincibility okay that's perfectly fine they didn't change too much with cersei with this uniform 
only two new skills a buff to her passives and some damage reduction it's okay i think this is a good upgrade for cersei many people might have been hoping for more personally what i would have liked to see here was the ability to keep her damage accumulation up pretty much all the time as you can see there's gonna be a two second gap even when you have your cooldown completely maxed out it's gonna be an eight second cooldown time and a six second duration but it's not as bad as what they did for icarus so let's jump over here and let's talk about icarus okay so first things first icarus is getting chain hit damage which is really really good because it synergizes really well with the ctp of energy however i'm not too sure if icarus is gonna be the type of character that you play with a ctp of energy because his skills look like they'll definitely trigger the proc early and it'll be very frustrating to play however they gave him 25 percent damage reduction which is actually quite significant because on his passive he already had i believe 30 percent Yes, he already had 30% damage reduction. So now, in addition to the uniform, he's going to have 55% damage reduction. That is a pretty big deal. Okay, this boy is going to be really, really tanky. So salute in that marble. They know what they're doing. They're trying to make this man a super tank. Now, here's the problem I have with what they did for Icarus. They kind of nerfed him, guys. I don't know what they were thinking here, but basically they increased the stun time from two seconds to three seconds they did the same thing for the silence they added paralysis here for three seconds that's fine but my problem with icarus right now guys is the fact that even though the immunity is staying the same it's lasting for five seconds i wanted this skill to have a 15 second cooldown time or lower but instead they decided to keep the cooldown time the same which means when you cut this in half by having your skill cooldown completely maxed out it's going to be nine seconds and before the damage accumulation for icarus lasted for seven seconds which means there's going to be a three second window where you have no damage accumulation whereas before there was only a two second window I know one second might not seem like that much, but if I'm getting a uniform, why am I losing damage accumulation time when damage accumulation is the primary way that I'm increasing the amount of damage that I'm doing? Maybe the skills hit harder, so they had to like balance him out by giving him less damage accumulation. But looking at what's her face here, Makari right and the fact that she has a higher amount of damage accumulation than icarus and she can keep it up indefinitely for 10 seconds with a seven and a half second cooldown why on earth is the boss the leader the main man the head honcho why the heck does he only have six seconds of damage accumulation with an 18 second cooldown why does he have even less than he had before in case you guys don't know what i'm talking about in game right now base form you can see right here it's still 0.6 percent on the damage accumulation but it lasts for seven seconds and it's an 18 second cooldown i don't know what netmarble was doing with this one ladies and gents but that's a miss for me they should have bumped this up to nine seconds and made it so the head honcho could keep this up all the time instead they're working backwards man anyways so this skill right here the effects or whatever they're staying the same but the cast time for the laser has been increased um it always had the ability to ignore iframe and move with the d-pad so that's cool however i was kind of hoping that they would change his fifth skill to make it so you could insta cancel it in case you don't know what i'm talking about i'll just hop in the preview menu right here and icarus's rotation it's gonna be something like this it's gonna be like three to get the accumulation up right you would probably want to cancel faster but to be honest if you're using him with a regular proc even if you cancel it faster it's still gonna be a problem but you want to go something like three and then five but you have to roar and let those things uh start flying away before you can jump into four because if you go three five and then go four you can notice the dragon rush is not happening and you want to get that dragon rush because if you let him start flying around you can jump into another skill and you will see that the dragon rush is still happening right so that's extra damage you're missing out on if you just go three five four so they should have definitely did something for his fifth skill to make it so you could 
get off the fifth skill and then go into the fourth skill and proc on that but it looks like you're gonna want to play him with a ctp of rage and since the rage cannot be reforged at this point it's really struggling to keep up with the energy and the judgment in world boss legend unfortunate times boy it looks like icarus for pvp might be getting a little bit better maybe a lot better but for pve it might be the same or worse we'll have to wait and see so a couple things that we got to go over Icarus is going to be very similar to Star-Lord where you can advance him to tier 3 through the epic quests. However, similar to Star-Lord, I believe you're going to have to finish his gears yourself, okay? Not sure if you guys know what I'm talking about, but when you finish Star-Lord, he's not really finished. You get the tier 3 skill, you get the tier 3 rank, so you can start using him in World Boss Legend, but his gears are still at 20 and then you have the responsibility of getting those gears to 25. Don't know if they're gonna change that for Icarus, but I wouldn't put it past them to just leave him at gear 20 and say, hey man, you on your own, you gonna have to tier three him and then finish those gears by your damn self, okay? So don't count on these guys to give you a pass there. So I'm just gonna be very, very real with you guys on that front. Um, the buffs on his tier three, honestly, it's mediocre it really is it looks like what they did for high appearance like stun silence penetration okay he's a pvp guy i guess invincibility okay 50 percent damage prop we've seen way better than this okay look at shang chi's tier three and then you'll know what i'm talking about we've seen characters get some really good effects on their tier three this this just seems mid especially considering he can't even keep his accumulation up all the time bro i was expecting something stellar on the tier three that's just yikes to me bro uh cersei and uh makari here their awakening skills are pretty much just like standard cookie cutter what we expect if you will now let's jump down here let's talk about the eternals epic quest because it's gonna be different than the ones that came before it where they give you a character to rank up and as you go through the story, you can get that character bracked all the way up to tier 3 or fully transcendent, if you will. This time around, the stories are going to be split up in individual sections so they can make more money. My guess, they're probably going to sell multiple Crystal Wall characters in this epic quest. So, yeah, choose wisely, guys. You never know. We might have two deluxe package characters this time around. Everything's... Uh, uh, changed all around for this uh, epic quest um, not too sure if I'm a fan of it yet we'll see ultimately how much crystals and resource they uh, extract from you because netmarble mobile future fight they're professional resource extractors okay anyways the fate of mankind a modern crisis Cersei and the fate of mankind outsiders off limit Icarus okay Agents need to possess Icarus at tier 2 to enter the Icarus story. So on the live stream, they said you would be getting a free tier 2 Icarus. And I've seen people in the chat be like, yes, this is awesome. A free premium character. Netmarble was like, um, I'm sorry. No, we're not doing that. We're sorry for misinforming that tier 2 Icarus will be given when entering the story for Icarus. <laughs> They're like, got him. <laughs> You're going to have to buy that boy. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry to my free-to-play brothers out there, man. But when entering the story for Icarus through the live stream, Icarus will not be given and can be acquired as a shift or reward. Okay, so you at least have a chance of getting a couple bios. Keep in mind, you only need five bios to unlock this man, but you're still going to need a mega rack up ticket, a mega tier two ticket before you can run his storyline. Be honest with you guys he's looking kind of mid he might not end up taking over pvp and taking down dr doom and sentry like many people are hoping for so maybe you're not missing out on anything but either way let the whales do their thing and then decide if you want to commit to this boy man because yeah it's no no free rides boys no free well you do get a free ride you get a free ride on cersei that sounded weird anyways Moving on, the Fate of Mankind Speed Race Makari agents need need to purchase the Fate of Mankind Speed Race Epic Quest to enter the story for Makari. That's 6,000 plus crystals. Okay, 
what is this gonna give you though so they have it in sections and they have the one that you can basically choose which one you want to do you can do hers for free because they're gonna give you a tier two uh cersei i believe it says somewhere here they're gonna give you a tier two cersei when you enter right but you have to buy her and then you have to tier to him so if you're free to play you get the the cersei one for free okay when you start another story can be selected upon clearing the quest okay so it's kind of like the heroic quest system yeah oh so right here agents can acquire a tier 2 six star cersei cersei will be advanced to tier 2 for agents who possess cersei below tier 2 biomancers will be given to agents who possess cersei at tier 2 or higher obviously it's never going to be the equal amount of biometrics that you deserve it's just whatever they want to give you probably like uh 25 percent of what you actually use to get her to tier 2 that's just how these guys operate anyways so the outlook of it seems to be the same as every other epic quest i thought it was going to be different where there weren't going to be missions but there's going to be missions and then there's going to still be a deluxe package mission okay okay i thought it was going to be different but i guess not this is the quest here for makari okay so just like all the other epic quests there'll be a permanent addition in terms of missions that you can farm every single day which means even more energy needs to be spent um even more time needs to be spent that's kind of yikes but it is what it is however you'll be able to farm one to three star artifacts and even three star artifacts with exclusive passives interesting okay so you can only farm the ones for Icarus, Cersei, and Makari. I was hoping it would be you have a chance of getting any of the three star exclusive passive abilities for any character that currently have an artifact in the game. Unfortunately, you can only farm the three star ones for each of these guys. And here's the thing you can't upgrade three star artifacts to four star, five star, or six star. So this is just mid even if you get the best possible reward here it's only good for a moment in time because you're gonna eventually have to gamble for the five and six star versions yikes boys well the four five and six star version okay so doing the mission for icarus will give you bios for icarus or black panther and then cersei will give you icarus i'm not sure who ocarus is ocarus <laughs> i don't know who ukaris is is this some type of new character bro i don't know i don't know new hidden character bro ukaris uh, <laughs> anyways uh, they just typoed anyways moving on this right here kind of tells me that whenever we get the new batch of eternals we might see another deluxe package where they add in more opportunities to farm exclusive passives for those characters artifacts so that's why i'm saying choose very wisely in regards to whether or not you buy this character because this might not be the only character that you have to pay crystals or money for in this epic quest okay especially since they gave away icarus last year so a lot of people already have him at tier two so they might not make too much money off him there they might be trying to make more money off somebody else in the next update and the next mid-month patch because my guess is the next two updates are going to be completely based on eternals and getting as much money as possible so moving on ladies and gentlemen down here the wolverine the legend himself he's getting a buff this is actually pretty cool so before he had immunity on his tier 3 skill they're changing it to invincibility this is good and bad invincibility means he can be debuffed he can be stripped of all of his buffs if he gets hit by the purifying wind effect in war boss legend so that is terrible in addition to that though with invincibility he now gets super armor which means he cannot be guard broken when he uses his tier 3 skill so this is good and bad okay moving on he now gets on his passive 25 percent damage reduction they did take away what was it 15 percent damage reduction from him with this new phoenix force uniform so it's nice to see that they gave it back to him with another 10 percent on top they also improved this third skill by giving him the ignore targeting effect which will make him more effective in pvp so salute to them for thinking and finding ways to make wolverine more appealing 
I don't know if this is gonna be enough for people to buy this uniform, but I think it's a good upgrade for the character. He needed more damage to be honest with you guys, but more survivability and the fact that he can basically no longer be guard broken in his ultimate skill, which is the ultimate piss off, that's actually not too bad. There's a couple other fixes here. So he used to perform a very awkward motion when he's attacking, they're fixing that. There's also a couple other things that they're releasing in this update, like this Eternals relay package. I personally won't be getting it, but that's just me. It's not the worst price in the world for what you're getting, but I personally just don't need any of these. The next thing is this right here, the Makari Speed Chess. I won't be getting this just because I've seen and been burned too many times before. I already know what it's like to use all of your six star cards, trying to reroll cards and just getting like shafted. So I've basically stopped buying these, even though at one point I would always say that this is worth it. And since there is no biometrics for free to play characters in this chess, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I remember spending 200 mythic cards trying to reroll one card and ending up with a worse version of that card. So for me, these are dead in the wind. I'm never buying them again. Moving on right here, we have a couple new events that are coming in. So as you can see with Halloween, there's going to be a Halloween stage where you can farm tokens and you have a chance of getting all the CTPs in the game. That's cool. It's just a chance though. So don't expect anything from it. There's also going to be a uniform discount for 40%, but do keep in mind that Black Friday is coming up. So it's going to be a 50% discount in like four weeks time. So look out for that. It's going to be, what is this? Uh, oh, some, some missions. When you rank up these characters, you're going to get some free stuff. So that's pretty cool. And then there's a uniform upgrade mission as well down here. They're deciding to give away 2x biometrics for Cersei and Black Panther. Not too sure why Black Panther, but it is what it is. And then they're going to give away some Black Antimatter, some Chaos Normstones. And then we're going to have a character ranking event for Cersei and Makari. Makari is going to be a crystal reward. And then Cersei is just going to be advancement materials. And I guess next week they're going to do one for Icarus probably for crystals as well since he's a paywall character technically so ladies and gents we're gonna wrap it up right here thank you guys so much for watching leave me your thoughts on the overall patch which will be coming tonight i will be streaming when this um pass goes live maybe an hour or two after it goes live so you guys can see how the epic quest looks and you can decide ultimately which one of these characters you want to work on but like i said be careful because that's going to be ten thousand crystals you need to spend and we don't know who else is coming and how soon they're coming. Let you guys. Peace.